why we ditched Next.js and never looked back. So I came across this blog post the other day on X and this seems like an interesting blog. So I want to go over this blog with you guys in this video. Put in my real views on Next.js because we use it extensively on Fermion as well as on Codedam, which are two platforms we are working on. And Next.js is everywhere. If you use Fermion, if you use websites that are powered by Fermion, you will see all the websites are built with Next.js. So I'm interested to read this blog post and give you my honest opinions as well. I don't have a very strong bias towards next year. So as to say, we are people who pick the best tools for the job and the ones that we also know. And I know for a fact that next year is not like a holy grail tool. So I'm interested to see what this blog post covers. So when we first chose next year, we understood the trade offs. SSR frameworks work well for marketing and docs, while single page applications are better for real time data heavy apps. We made that decision with years of hands on experience in both. I'm assuming that you SSR specific Specifically, I would say is not the solid recipe. I think SSG plus SSR is a good thing because server side rendering react always on every single page reload is going to be slow, right? So I think that is one thing which I can point out. SSG, however, works great because you just render it once, store it on the cache, wherever on the edge. And that is how you get insane speed. The promise versus the reality of Next.js, right? Let's see, it's going to get serious. Next.js performance issues are one thing, but the constant shifts in its philosophy philosophy are even worse. The same company that built its entire identity around Jamstack and the static site generation pivoted to serverless, then became the cheerleaders of SSR, the complete opposite of what they originally post. Now they are moving away from serverless again in favor of micro VMs. Who would have thought? So I think this is true. Next.js parent company that is worse than the company that created it. I also have this one problem with them. They actively advocated what we do on Fermion and I still believe this is the best way to build websites. So let me go to one of the websites that's powered by Fermion that is learn.coderscan.com. So if I go into one of the standard pages of courses, you will see that if I refresh this page, it takes a second for this, these set of buttons to come, but everything else that you can see is instantly there, right? So this is how Next.js used to recommend that you have a shell, which instantly appears. And then you make backend calls from your front end, which is a separate system altogether. Now, this is the, not the very first thing. This is the only thing that I feel that aligns with me also in terms of speed and decoupling with the cloud. What Worsell has been pushing now with App Router and with, you know, React 19 and RSC and, you know, with micro VMs as well is a lot of things. And honestly, I don't like it personally. We don't use React App Router at all. We don't find it comfortable enough. And plus we don't find the benefits, the streaming thing, for example, or, you know, how the, it reduces waterfall or database calls and all. We don't get that because our backend is completely separate from our front end. And I think that is how it should be also. Let me just show you this. So if we have this as the region earth, your backend should be in a single place. Let's say, I don't know, wherever it is in US East one. So this is where your backend is. This is where your database is. However, your, you know, your website, which is the front end, and I'm just drawing a very bad shape of world, but your front end should be everywhere, right? So these edge locations that you see over here, these should be everywhere in the world. And this is precisely what Worsell also used to recommend earlier, but now they have shifted that your back end, for example, your front end while making an React server RSC call could just call the database directly from here. I don't think this should be done on the render time. I think this should be done by the front end because what it does is that it locks you in the compute that you're using. For example, if you're using database calls from Vercel and you're using RSC, then you are supposed to have some smart compute always on, right? Which is supposed to render it on the fly, get the data, cache it maybe and so on. With the setup that we have, you just build the page once, wherever it is, whether in Cloudflare, whether in Vercel, whether on your own EC2 instance, you cache it on the edge and these computers act as dumb systems. They just cache and deliver to your users, right? They just make the first call to the database wherever they want to, you know, render if, if they want to render this data, for example, and then rest of the thing is done by the front end. So I completely agree that philosophy has been changing crazy with Vercel, how you should be building apps. And that also reflects in the product they are building. I understand from a business point of view, because it makes it even more lucrative to use Vercel products, but from another business who's actually using the pro provider and who's actually having hundreds of websites and scaled up websites on the cloud, it scares me a bit to use Vercel because it's a very strong vendor lock-in, right? Which you would want if you are the owner, but don't want if you are the consumer. Next, yes, loves to talk about how fast it is, yet it's been 
painfully slow at scale. Here's what we saw. Basic page renders were taking two to 400 milliseconds. Large pages, especially the ones with dynamic content could spike well beyond 700 milliseconds. So uh, again, like this will, your performance will vary with your setup. If you have done it with Vercel and if you're doing it with SSG plus caching properly, this is impossible. If you're doing it with SSR and you are rendering it on your own EC2 instance or your setup, then this could be as bad as you want, right? So I would not comment on this thing because you can see this page, for example, is also built and served via Cloudflare and Vercel together. So we have Vercel behind Cloudflare, but you can see if I go to the document tab and if you keep your eye over here, this page gets served to me in 48 milliseconds end to end, right? So nothing like 200 to 400 milliseconds or even 700 milliseconds, but our approach is different, right? So we are just serving it instantly from the edge cache, wherever you are situated in the world. And it's not just for me, by the way, you can have access it anywhere if you are in the world and it should have similar results for you because this initial page, the HTML of this page, page gets served from the edge location, right? Not from an actual server call or any rendering is happening. Nothing like that's happening. And of course, like uh, obviously if your pages are slow, then performance would be a huge concern and you can't have marketing pages and landing pages load very slow always, right? First time load is fine, but if you keep on refreshing and it's still slow, then your architecture is the problem. So of course, SEO will take a hit. If your speeds are slow, then it would be problematic. And that is what they cover in Ahrefs. Uh, they saw that their web page rankings tanked. When Next.js crashed, we didn't get useful errors. When things slowed down, we couldn't pinpoint why. And I think a broader reason for this is they are likely hosting Next.js on their own, which I think is something that he would have also mentioned later in the blog that Vercel, for example, is the best way to host Next.js. And that comes with a big asterisk because a lot of things we have also personally observed work great and work only if you're using Vercel as a provider. Otherwise, you run into a lot of errors. I don't know if it, this is deliberate or if this just happens to be one of the things that, you know, Vercel has really gotten good at. But even Netlify, we tried Netlify, we have tried our own EC2 setup. We might just later down the line shift to a Docker-based thing eventually but as of now Vercel I feel for example even for Fermion is the best way to host and deploy an Next.js website otherwise there are errors and weird behaviors all sorts of you know all sorts of ways so sometimes some things don't work sometimes routing properly doesn't work sometimes there are issues with middleware and image generation and so on so it might be a skill issue sure you can say that but we have spent a lot of time working with Vercel and Next.js and we have spent time going away from Vercel also and then we came back because it was just not worth it the amount of time we were spending compared to the value that we were creating with the business so they finally decided they don't want to use Next.js so they didn't move to Astro or any, any other framework because they already know how to build SSR so I mean nothing like that so if you can do something from ground up that's the best way to build software I feel then you actually get real benefits and you know inside out how things are working. My favorite way of building any software is to build it from ground up. Of course, you can use stable libraries and stable things, for example, like using React, which has been there for the last 10 years. But yes, if you are running into black box issues and black box problems, then it's better to just screw everything and just start from the ground up, which is what they did. And they did mention that real cost of Next.js and Vercel is that how tightly it's coupled with Vercel. No arguments there, no questions there. Next.js features often work best or only on Vercel. This is very true. Vercel Vercel locks you in with expensive hosting. I would also say this is true. Vercel's pricing are insane. If you look at pricing matrix in general, if you go all the way from a platform like Hertzner that charges like a $1 per terabyte of bandwidth, all the way to platforms like AWS that charge you like $80, $90 per terabyte to Vercel, which are even more expensive given, you know, what sort of bandwidth you are using. So, so yeah, I mean, I would say that this is expensive hosting compared to if you are doing it on your own. And uh, if you are, again, this third point, I think makes sense if you are not using Vercel. So if you're trying to not use Vercel and trying to scale an XJS instance by a pool of EC2 instances and trying to maintain a cache or something, it's going to be a headache. So they switched on their own custom React stack. They just rendered it and they just did it. If you have a tiny site, Next.js is fine. But if you care about performance, SEO scalability, or having control over your tech stack, you might want to reconsider. They say Next.js is bloated, slow, unnecessarily complex. So this parts of this are true. I would not say that this is completely false or something, but I do 
realize that there are ways to get Next.js to work on production. By no means, Fermion is a very is a tiny website, but still we are able to pull off a multi-tenant website with thousands of pages per website, and there are hundreds of such websites uh, hosted on Fermion, powered by Wurzel and Next.js and Cloudflare without breaking our bank, right? So that is also an important thing. So we are not breaking our bank. We are not on a Wurzel enterprise contract. We are not doing like, you know, many things. And in fact, as a matter of fact, we can replace Wurzel with a Dockerized Next.js system because with Next.js also, we have learned a lot. We have chipped away all the essential things onto external services. And Next.js is, as of now, for Formion especially, the only thing that we use in Next.js is server-side rendering and making the database calls at the time of render, right? We render it once, we store it in cache. That's the only thing we do, right? So I think we are pretty close in terms of what they are doing, that they are rendering something on server and they're creating a cache for it. We are doing the same thing. It's working fine for us for now, at least with Wurzel. We did actually run into a very interesting bug, which I have not shared with Wurzel or anywhere in public also with the Fluid Compute, right? So their Fluid Compute actually breaks our website. Maybe I'll cover it sometime in future. But yes, there is a problem with Next.js and there is a problem with Wurzel. I admit that. Maybe not as strong as what this blog post goes, but definitely I agree with some of the points. Do let me know in the comments, what do you feel about Wurzel and Next.js? I mean, on the contrary, just to balance the scales, Wurzel is in fact a great piece of engineering and great piece of product. The only thing I personally don't like about Wurzel is the billing, the pricing compared to like how you can do it on your own. And um, yeah, the practices that they have sort of like, you know, just like he mentioned where the constant shifts in philosophy, I don't like app router being pushed on me. I don't like a React server components, RSCs and all. All of that is optional. I appreciate that in Next.js, but it clearly shows that Pages router would be deprecated or removed in the next few years, if not months. So yeah, that's, that's an issue, but that's all for this one. Do let me know in the comments what do you think. I will see you in the next video very soon.